Yum Brands reporting quarterly results earlier this hour, beating on the bottom line, but sales missing estimates. It was a similar story at Kraft Heinz, where the revenue missed the street's expectations as price increases were offset by a 7% drop in volumes. It's a theme we've heard from several food companies this year as consumers push back on higher prices, opting for cheaper alternatives. Joining us right now to talk about how food inflation is impacting the sector is Greg Portel, Carney Global Markets lead partner. Greg, uh, is that the story? Are consumers actually pushing back on, on higher prices? Well, we've had a really good run of consumer power. The consumer sentiment, consumer spending has been strong coming out of the pandemic and through this mini recession. And we are seeing a point where wallets are starting to be stretched and consumers are going to have to start making choices. They're not necessarily trading down, but they are spending those dollars differently. And you're seeing that as you start to see these food companies come out with earnings. You know, I, I think back to last week when we heard from Procter & Gamble and Pepsi that were both able to raise their prices and that was responsible for their organic volume growth. Is it different when it comes to actual restaurants? Well, restaurants have a lot of different dynamics than just the food companies. Not only do they have exposure to the food, they also have labor costs, they have labor availability, and then they have all the operational complexity that comes with a with a consumer experience that is tied up into that last point of contact. So you think about those bigger companies that have the ability to span their risk and their opportunity across multiple segments, it gives them a lot more flexibility when it comes to hitting these algorithms. With companies like Yum, they're really tied into one sector, so they hit that, uh, that barrier of consumer spending a lot quicker than some of these more diversified companies. What does that mean for margins in these companies? Well, ultimately, the question is, it's a race. Do you have earnings or do you have revenue? And right now, we're seeing the revenue slowing. But in these well these well managed companies, we're seeing the cost programs that they've been putting in place start to have effect. So when I look at companies and compare their their bottom line, what you're seeing is a company with a management team that's able to manage the complexity of running a, a multinational business while still realizing that they have some headwinds on the revenue side. So it's really a testament to the ability of management to pull through their programs at this point when you see the earnings go up, even though revenue is, is down. What do these companies need to be doing at this point? What do you advise? There's a couple of different pieces. The first one is making sure you have supply security. I think as we found coming out of the pandemic, the ability to get access to food and to product and then ultimately to labor is really a priority for most of these companies. Now, while the supply chain risks have abated a little bit, that ability to get access to labor is still their biggest critical point when it comes to serving a restaurant sector. So right now it's all about optionality and being able to define the cost of that optionality for your investors. And just looking more broadly at Kraft Heinz, um, maybe some of the other companies that kind of fall in that same place, do you think the consumer is really going to hang on and, and spend, I guess that's like kind of the $64 million question. Here. <laughs> that is, it's for everyone right now. Yeah. Well, I think what you're seeing is companies start to really invest in that innovation pipeline because consumer spending's there. The question is, what will they spend it on? So you're going to see a lot of creativity around formulations, pack size, and some different uh, innovations around flavors, because that's going to give consumers a fresh reason to spend and break them out of what could be a, a steady decline in consumer spending. Variations around flavors, is that mostly hot stuff? Because I think that's been the trend for, I don't know, the last decade or so, or are there other new things when it comes to flavors you can do? Well, I think right now it's all about speed of conversion of flavors. I think what we found is that, yes, you have the, you have the overall theme of hot, but the question is how fast can you work innovation through? Because it's not just a hot, cold, spicy, guacamole, whatever the flavor of the day happens to be. It's how fast can you cycle that through your product mix so uh -huh. that you're able to catch the wave before it happens.